Now that I know the basic ideas of finding the area underneath the curve by estimation using rectangles, now I can talk about what happens when I take that limit going to infinity. When I take the limit going to infinity of my sum of rectangles, where I have divided it into equal delta x's and then I multiply it by the f of x of those, whatever those x's happen to be, and I take this limit and I have it go to infinity, where I'm going to have infinitely many little bars, so to speak, then as that limit approaches or goes to infinity, the a similar thing happens in the case of the derivative. Say I've got f of x plus h minus f of x over h. At this point, I'm just estimating what the derivative is or the rate of instantaneous rate of change is by taking by getting values very close to to no change at all essentially but it's still just an estimation but when I take the limit as h goes to zero then this limit is the actual value and the same thing is for this type of limit as well. And this type of limit is has a special name. It's called the definite integral. When it's on a fixed interval a, b. So this whole deal, which is the sum of all of these rectangles, is equal to this sum. The limit is n goes to infinity with the summation of the functional values of those set x points times the delta x for n times as n goes to infinity. This is equal to what's called the definite interval when the notation goes like this. This is called the integral symbol. It's actually an elongated s which is supposed to stand for the sum of the limits apparently. a and b is the interval that it's on. a is the first point and b is the second f of x is the function, and then this, this uh, I'll have to explain later once I go over the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it's just equal to this whole thing, and it just includes the limit as it goes to infinity. And here's one more illustration of what the difference is. The summation, which this is called the Riemann sum, this is just an estimation I can get very, very close, I can get very, very small, but it's still an estimation similar to this situation where I can get h values very, very small, but it's still only an estimation of the instantaneous rate of change. It's not until I take the limit as h approaches zero, or in the case of the integral, as n approaches infinity, does it become the actual value of what it's looking for, and in the case of the derivative here, it's the instantaneous rate of change in the case of the integral, or the definite integral in this case. It is a number which is the area under the curve, and not just the area, but the net area. So that is one more thing I wanted to say. When it calculates this area between A and B, it's going to take these positive parts and then add them to this negative part, so it'll be a net area. It's not going to be this area positive this area positive and then this area positive it's going to be plus plus minus and then whatever the net effect of that is and that is what the definite interval is